In the previous example, we have seen how to initialize our ports. Now we will write a very simple functions to read our GPIO port F data register. So in this function, we will be reading PF4 and PF0 pins, and the function should return the read value. So this is our return type, unsigned long, and this is our function name. And let's write our function. This is really simple. So we will be returning so this is our register GPIO port F data register and to read PF0 and PF4 I need to add this with hex value of 1 1 so this is simply reading PF0 and PF4 and then we are returning the result so for example if my data register is 1 0 0 1 1 for example if I end this with this one zero 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 one, so this is PF four, this is PF zero, so this is bit four and this is bit zero. So if I end this, what will I get? One and one is one, and then I will get three zero, and then another one. So I will be returning this value, but basically I will be reading one and one from bit positions. 0 and 4. So now let's look at this simple example to write a port. So in this case, this is our function name port f write. So we need to write our variable data to the GPIO port f data register. And data variable is unsigned long time. So let's write our function. So we need to pass our variable to this function. So to write it simply I need to say GPIO port F data register is equal to data. So this is very simple but one thing we notice here in this case we are changing all the bits of data register. So in many cases, we don't want to do this. So now we will look at two different methods to change only specific bits of the data registers. So to access specific bits, the first method that we can use is this read modify write. So why do we need this? Because in most cases, a software module needs to access only some of the port pins. So we have seen this already. For example, when we are activating our clock port F, in this example, we are only changing one bit of this RCGC GPIO register. So the first thing what we are doing, we are reading this register and then we are ORing this with hex 20. We are modifying our register. And after we modify it, the result is written back to the same register. And this is our right step. So in three steps, we are modifying specific bits of our register. So in three steps, we are accessing specific bits and then modifying its value. Let's look at the second method, which is more efficient method. So the second method is bit specific addressing. So our microcontroller allows us to access one bit or combination of bits using a specific address. So this way we prevent accidental change of other bits that we do not need. However, this property is only available for the data registers. So to find the specific address for our bits, we are trying to access we have two steps in the first step we add up the corresponding constants so if you want to access a bit let's say i am trying to access bit 2 and bit 3 so there's a corresponding offsets for each bit so the first step i add up these for example i will get hex 3 0 so then this constant is added to the port that we are trying to access. Let's say I am trying to access port D so that the new address will be hex 4007030. So by using this address, I will be able to access bit 3 
and bit 2. So let's look at this address field. So this address field is the top 22 bits of the base address. So this is bit 10 to bit 31. And the remaining section is the offset section. So you can see we have this 8-bit field as a mask bit. So you can think of this as the bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, bit 3, up to bit 7. So for 8 bits we have a 1 section. So if I am trying to access bit 3 and bit 2, what I do actually I am putting 1 here and 1 here. All the remaining portions are... 0, 0. Now if we look at the whole 12 bits here, we have 0, 0 here, right? Assume we have 0, 0 here. Now I have hex 0 here, hex 3 here, and another 0 here. So as you see, we could also find the same offset value using this addressing field. Now let's look at a very simple example so that it will help us to understand this concept better. So in this example we are trying to access port B bits 1, 2 and 3. The base address for port B is here. So I will be taking this 40005 from the base address section and then I have to find out the offset section. This is my mask field, so I will be putting 1 here because this is bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, bit 3. Another one here and another one here. The remaining fields are 0. Now as you see what I got, the first 4 bits is 8 and the remaining 4 bits, so this is 3. And remaining 2 is 0, but there will be another 0, 0 here and 0. So the new address will be 40005038. So if I use this address, then I will be accessing port P, pin 3, pin 2, and pin 1. So by using this address, I will be only accessing these three bits and I will not be changing other bits. So you can also try to do same thing using the offsets. So if I use the offset, this is my base address. The offset for the first bit is hex 0008. So the offset for the bit one, for bit 2, I have hex value of 0010 and for bit 3, I have the hex value of if I add up these four number, then I will get the same thing. Okay. So one thing you need to notice, if I add all these offsets to the base address, I will be getting the address for the data register. For example, for port B, if I have this base address and if I add all the offsets here, what I will be getting, I will be getting 400053FC. So this is the register address for port B data register. So in this case, I will be able to access all these eight bits. Now let's do a simple comparison between read, modify, write and bit specific addressing. Assume we would like to access only port A, bit four and bit five, which is PA4 and PA5. Show how to set clear and toggle these pins. 
in the first case i will be using read modify right in the second case i will be using a bit specific addressing so if i use the first method to set this register i need to do read modify right so i will be doing a read this modifying it with the sex value of 30 because this 3 will be accessing pa4 and pa5 and then after the modifying it we will be writing it back to do here so if i do the same thing using the bit specific addressing i need to first find out the address so this is my base address then i need to add the offset for the pa5 and this is the offset for the pa4 for zero so the address in this case will be So I will be using this address, right? But in the read modify, right? I will be using the address for this data register. After finding the address, then I need to use a define, right? So I will be saying define, let's say PA4 and 5. Then I have to write this volatile unsigned long and then the, our specific address is 40040c0 so now i can directly use this define so for setting pa4 and 5 i only need to say 30 so this only accesses bit 4 and bit 5 and we are not modifying other bits so for the clear operation in the read modify right i will be using this and and then complement operation again in this case i am reading all of these bits but in the bit specific addressing all i need to write is pa45 is equal to hex zero although i am writing eight bits it will be only changing bit 4 and bit 5 because i am using this specific address so for toggling in read modify write i have to use this xor and hex 30 in the bit specific addressing i will be using this pa45 but in this case again i have to use the same xor operator and then i have to xor it with the hex 30 now let's do one more example so in this case we are assuming pd0 port has connected to a positive logic switch it means if i press the switch the pin will get the value of one and it has also some external pull down register so i don't need to use the internal pull down register so i need to write a code which continuously reads the switch value and then it will increase a counter variable so for this example i will be using bit specific addressing so the first thing we need to do to use our symbolic registers i will be including this header file and then i need to define the bit specific addressing for the pd0 so i write our volatile unsigned long term here and then we need to write our address for pd0 this will be 4000704 so this 4 is the offset for the 4 bit 0 so now after we define this we need to use a counter variable so i will define a count variable i will say cnt is equal to 0 and then i have to initialize this pd0 so for this i will be using my system control clock enable register rc gc gpio register and i have to enable port d so for this i can shift my one three times to the left so this will be activating my clock of course i need to wait until the port is ready so i will say while system control peripheral ready gpio register and i have to read bit position three so for that i will be ending this with x 08 
and I will say as long as this is zero, I will wait. So once port D is one, then I will get a non-zero value. If bit three is one, this will be a non-zero. So I will be exiting the while loop. Then I can enable my port. Now let's define the direction for the GPIO port D direction register and I will set it to 00, zero because my switch is an input and then I need to enable PD0 digitally digital enable register and I will be using hex 01 so this will enable PD0 now I need to continuously read my switch PD0 so I will say while 1 I can say if PD0 equal equal hex 01 then I can increase my counter then I will close my while loop. So this will continuously read my switch and whenever it is one, it will increase my counter. Note that instead of using this if statement, I can directly say in this case, count equal to count plus PD zero. So this way, whenever the switch is one, I will be adding it to the counter. I will not be using the if condition.